Uh, the blood supply uh, that you can see is uh, there is different um, uh, blood vessels involved. So here you can see that the vertebral artery and then become the basal artery, and this is the posterior uh, cerebral artery. So it's uh, supplying uh, different parts of the uh, you know the basal ganglia there. So the posterior artery, if you if I want to be more specific, uh, subthalamic nucleus uh, and substantia nigra and part of the uh, thalamus is uh, supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. Uh, this is the anterior communicating artery, artery, and this is the middle cerebral artery. And the middle cerebral artery it has the uh, uh, you know this is anterior striate arteries if you remember it, and that is um, supplying the lantiform and coded uh, nucleus, lantiform and coded nucleus. Uh, this is the anterior cerebral artery, and the arterial cere anterior cerebral artery is similar to the um, middle cerebral artery. And the anterior choroidal artery is again uh, similar to middle cerebral, so lantiform and coded uh, nucleus are supplied by these arteries. If you look at this one, um, so you can see. Uh, you can see that there is a lateral uh, ventricle and this is a caudate nucleus. Um, so it is supplied by the anterior and middle cerebral artery and also posterior cerebral, but you cannot see it in this image. Um, and uh, you can also see that uh, this is the putamen and this is the globus pallidus. Uh, so it is supplied by the middle cerebral artery, uh, but also it is. Uh, uh, supplied by other anterior choroidal arteries and uh, anterior cerebral artery. You cannot see it from here, so it's difficult to see it from from this view. Uh, this is a thalamus which is supplied supplied by posterior uh, cerebral artery. Different diseases. One is uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, that is because of damage of substantia nigra. And if you guys remember, the substantia nigra um, has uh, dopamine. Uh, so um, uh, once the substantia nigra is damaged, there is a decrease in, in dopamine level, and um, that will cause uh, different, uh, you know, de uh, depletion of the dopamine in the caudate and putamen, so in the striatum. Um, so that is the problem. That's one problem, and also. Uh, decrease dopamine, uh, decrease uh, uh, dopamine to uh, subthalamic nucleus. So uh, that normally subthalamic nucleus is uh, suppressed by substantia nigra. Now the suppression is gone. Uh, so they will have different motor uh, problems, but not sensory problems. So bradykinesia is just a decrease in movement. Hypokinesia is weakness. Rigidity is stiffness. Uh, the stiffness is that because signals are coming from other pathways, and normally those signals that are going to substantia nigra is inhibited, but now it's not inhibited, and that's why rigidity is a sign of upper motor neuron disease. And the person also have resting tremor. So tremor is a, a rapid involuntary um, movement, especially in the hands. Uh, it's resting because there's other types of tremor, for example, tremor from anxiety um, that you get, but that is at rest, you don't have that tremor, so that's the difference. Um, they also have a, a poker face, so they don't have much of the facial expression. Another condition is uh, called MPTP induced Parkinsonism. Uh, that is um, due to a specific drug, um, MTPT, and that is a meperidin analog. Meperidin is a opioid analog, and uh, it's for for pain. But nowadays they don't use it because of the high addiction. Uh, this uh, chemical was actually uh, produced by a PhD student in his lab, and he was using it and. After six years, um, he died of overdose of MPTP because it depletes all the dopamine and the substantia nigra. Um, so, 
it's not that common anymore this uh, condition uh, Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant chromosome 4 is involved and here is that uh, uh, problem with uh, um, cholinergic and GABAergic uh, neurons so both caudate nucleus and uh, putamen they are both involved so striatum is involved here and um, because of that the signals are not sent to the internal part of the globus pallidus and if you remember it that is inhibitory signals are sent there and um, there is an increase in uh, uh, signals, um, inhibitory signals that are coming uh, from the external part of uh, uh, globus pallidus to, to subthalamic nucleus. So that is another problem. So subthalamic nucleus uh, activity is increased, but the input uh, uh, to the globus pallidus is decreased uh, from a striatum, so in, in both uh, pathways. Uh, and uh, you can also see the atrophy of the frontal and temporal lobe if you look at an MRI there is a movement of um, there is a problem with the eye movements the Courier 4 movements are uh, abnormal movements uh, it can happen in the, ha in the limbs and the trunks um, also in other parts of the body so uh, this is more irregular movements uh, but a moderate range of movements and dementia. Dementia is a uh, uh, chronic mental disorder that uh, will cause a decrease in mental function. Uh, they have a uh, problem with uh, uh, memories and also dis uh, disorientation. So there's three different things that you see in patients with dementia. And it can be diagnosed, uh, diagnosed with uh, DNA techniques. Uh, balism and hemibalism is a uh, motor disorder again and that is because of damage in the, the subthalamic nucleus um, so um, in this case uh, there is not enough uh, signals or uh, sent to the internal part of the globus pallidus uh, so that is excitatory signal that normally should be sent to the internal part of the globus pallidus from subthalamic nucleus but that's not sent there um, so the inhibition that the normally this pathway is inhibiting the uh, signals um, that goes to uh, that goes from the inhibiting signals in the globus pallidus so, so the output of the globus pallidus is inhibitory to the thalamus so if this signal is inhibited now the other pathway becoming or the direct pathway becoming um, more active so here is the movement that happens here is the uh, is a very wide range of movements and uh, uh, the, the movements are in the extremities very uh, you know if, for example flexion extensions are in extreme range or abduction and abduction is an extreme range compared with coriform movements and so of course in the other contralateral sides because of the, the pathways cross and the brain stem uh, and third dive uh, dyskine dyskinesia is the, another uh, movement and the person usually has a antipsychotic medication so this is a side effect of medication and, and uh, this is uh, usually difficult to treat and uh, uh, some patients uh, will have permanent uh, problems so um, they will affect the face, limb and or trunk and they have a movement as regular slow uh, movements um, the last one is the hepatolenticular degeneration or Wilson's disease this is an autosomal recessive a chromosome 13 is involved there they have some motor uh, movements so for example tremor, rigidity, uh, Courier form and uh, acetotic movements uh, they also have uh, psychological issues, for example, personality disorders. They have psychosis and dementia. So dementia and delirium is a little bit different. Some uh, time people confuse that delirium is a, an acute condition and dementia is a, as a chronic condition. 
case of Fleischer rings, uh, Fleischer rings, uh, you can see it in the eyes. And if you take a biopsy of the liver, you see the, the liver cells are damaged, and you have an increased uh, copper concentration in the liver. Uh, also, because of the precipitation of copper uh, in the brain in the lentiform nucleus, you can see all these uh, different um, signs and symptoms there. Uh, if you check the blood level of seroloplasmin, which is copper, the, the, the blood level is decreased, but there is an increase in excretion of uh, copper in, in urine. So there is a lot of diagnostic uh, ways to, to recognize this disease. Uh, thank you.